Hello, my name is Samantha Torres. I am in class uh, CSCI 436501. I'm doing the cross-site request foraging attack lab. The first task that was given was observing the HTTP request. Using the HTTP header live tool provided by the browser, we can be uh, able to view a GET request and a POST request. A GET request retrieves information from the server. A POST request re requests that a web browser accepts the data that is given in the body of the message. So in the virtual machine, I assume that you have the Seed Labs um, OS installed and created. And so then we go into Firefox. Give it a few minutes to load. Once it's loaded, you're going to go and go to the CSRF Labs L elgg.com okay, so now you're going to go and open up the HTTP header live tool uh, let me just resize this So I'm just going to clear it and I'm going to log in as Bobby. And now that I'm logging in, you can see that I'm getting and uh, retrieving Git requests and post re requests in the HTTP header live tool. Here I'm scrolling up to see the post request. If you click on the request and maximize it, you'll see more in detail the information of the post request. And then if you do the same for a Git request, you also get more detailed information for your Git request. Here I'm just maximizing it, and here you can see uh, details on the GET request. For the second task, uh, we have to modify the index.html file to perform the GET request attack through the source attribute in an image tag. I have provided the code snippet here for your reference. Okay, so Bobby uses the modified index.html and referenced git request to make a malicious URL that he puts in a blog post. Alice does not have any friends in her friends list at the moment. Alice, being curious, clicks on the post and is taken to a site that is currently unavailable. She then returns to ELE, the ELEG website. When she returns, she finds that Bobby was added to her friends list. Alice has to check her friends list and confirms that Bobby is in fact her friend in her friends list. But how did Bobby do this? So there are four roles in this attack. Alice, the victim, the trusted site, Bobby, the malicious user, and the malicious site. The cross-site 
uh, request forgery um, using a git request works as followed. Alice was already logged into the trusted website. When she clicked on the malicious website that Bobby posted, she finds an unavailable site. The malicious site was actually making a git request posing as Alice. This allows Bobby to become Alice's friend without her having to click anything from the website. In the following, I will show you how it is done in the virtual machine. So we're going to close the HTTP uh, header live tool. And uh, we're going to open the terminal. And here we're going to open the index.html file. The password for this is seed but backwards. And you're going to want to cancel and for time, for save time, I had our previously made the code and I just paste it onto the index.html file. Uh, you can go back into the slide to see the referenced code. So here, this is what will make the git request. So then you're going to do save as, and you're going to go into backslash folder and then the var folder. And you're going to want to go to www csrf attacker and you're going to want to save in the attacker folder so once that's saved you're going to want to exit out of the index.html file and you're going to go you're going to want to go uh, to the eleg website and you're going to create a blog on bobby's profile. So I just put wow, look at this site, and you're going to put in the malicious website. So www.csrflabattacker.com. And you're going to save it. Okay, so once that's done, you're going to want to log out of Bobby's account and you're going to log into Alice's account. Now that you're Alice, you're going to want to see that, wow, Bobby posted this blog post and I'm curious. So I open it up and it says, sorry, this site is unavailable. I go back and it says, you have successfully added Bobby as a friend. So I go and check my friends list and Bobby is my friend, is Alice's friend. So that's the end of task two. In task three, in test three, we're using uh, post requests. So Bobby will be using um, the post request to attack Alice. Bobby must first find a reference on what a post request looks like. He uses the HTTP header live tool to find the post request and modifies the index.html file. Bobby modifies the index.html file with uh, the reference that he got in HTTP header live tool. Uh, he uses this to change Alice's description to Bobby as my hero. Alice hates Bobby. She would never write that. Bobby's malicious website will force her description to be changed. So Alice being curious clicked on the malicious site posted by Bobby. She is sent to a website that automatically closes. When she returns to the eLeg website, a new notification is shown saying her profile was successfully saved. Alice confirms that her description was changed to Bobby is my hero.
So the post request uses uh, four roles, the victim, the trusted site, the malicious user, and the malicious site. Instead of using a get request, though, it uses a post request, which forces Alice to change her description. So in the virtual machine, we're going to log out of Alice, and we're going to go back into Bobby's account. Say, so now we're going to want to go into our profile and we're going to want to open the HTTP header live and we're going to want to make a description of ourselves and we're going to want to see the post request that happens in the HTTP header live file once we do that. We need to use this post request as a reference so that Bobby can create the malicious site um, and Alice, Alice's description will be changed. So here is the post request and the information we're using is this really long um, piece of information here. It tells us um, information such as token, um, the timestamp, and other information that we need. So once we have done that, we're going to open the terminal and we're going to do the same thing to find the index.html, but make sure you're using the one that you have done previously before which here I'm trying to do that and just to save time I did the code beforehand and I pasted it on in the virtual machine the code is in the slides in um, so you can reference it so this is the hack 2 and it has all the code um, that will change Alice's description and it is based on the post request that we found. So you're going to want to save this file and you're going to want to go back to the ELGG website and you're going to log out of Bobby's account and log back into Alice's account. Once you've logged back in, you're going to want to go to the blogs and click on Bobby's Malicious website. Here, you see that your profile has been changed. And it says here, Bobby is my hero. It was changed. So task four was implementing a counting measure for the ELEG. Uh, to be able to turn on the countermeasures for ELEG, we must go to the directory as follows and find the action service.php file. Once there, find the function gatekeeper and comment out the line return true. Redo the get and post request attacks and see if they work. Doing the get requests when the countermeasures are on will result in, in this error. This error occurs because the countermeasure needs to have the unique token and timestamp fields so that I can validate the information with the session of the current user. When running the post request attack with countermeasures on, these errors will occur. This, this occurs because the countermeasures checks two fields, the unique token and the timestamp, it will then compare the two values and checks whether the values are valid with the current user. The secret token validation will fail because the countermeasures know that it's a cross-size request and not a legitimate request from the user. So to do task four, we're going to go into the files and we're going to go to computer here and we're going to follow the path that was given to us in the slides.
So once in actions uh, service.php, you want to make it easier, just press Control F and uh, find the function um, gatekeeper. When you have found it, all you're going to want to do is comment out return true. And you're going to save the PHP file. And you're going to want to run the post request already. Since you have already had the HTML done, you can run this one. But first, we have to revert back and clear Alice's description. So once you do that, you're going to go back to the blog and click on Bobby's malicious site. Okay, so you see that it's continuously trying and you see these errors here. So now to do the git request, you're going to go back into the index.html and you're going to put back the code that you used to do the git request. Once you do that, save that. If you get this notification, the password is still D's. So once you've done that, you're going to want to go back to Elig and go to the post and click on the website. You're going to get this error here. And you, from the sites, you know why this happens. And so thank you for watching this video.